Hey guys, welcome back to the 2018's Veteran Park Open presented by Legacy Discs and Kratom. For Crush Boys commentary, got beside me Simon Lazat. Are you ready for the back 12? Yep, excited to watch Emerson keep uh, crushing this chorus. If he keeps doing what he's doing, then... Uh, wow, he's leading already, 17 under. He started this round at seven under? Mm-hmm. He's on fire. We got hole 13, par three, 373 feet, pretty much in the middle of nowhere. Used to be a tree in the middle of the fairway, it's gone now, so super boring. You wanna hang your shot way right if you're throwing a right-handed, backhanded shot. It's gonna skip really far left. Look at this wind, guys. You gotta freaking crush it to get all those 370 feet. Emerson looks to put a pretty good move on this. It's fading towards the basket. And there it is. Wow. Great shot by Emerson. He really played that shot well into the wind. He threw an overstable Lucidex Enforcer. Skips, and that wind just gives it that extra push into the basket. That little skip off the rim was amazing. And he is on fire right now. He's five under on four holes, and the holes that he's doing it on aren't easy. Just, he's pumped up. Oh, he's just like smiling at all. And the funny off. thing is, he's actually sick right now, too. He's Great. so sick right now. <laughs> I try to do what Emerson's doing. He's and basically the sickest. He is the sickest. Sickest of them all. I'm short inside the circle. What a hole to get the ace on, the middle of nowhere hole in ripping winds. And Nolan almost does the same thing. That'd have been really cool to see two aces on the card. Yeah. It's always good when the first person on the card hits the ace, then you have three chances to top it off. Mm hmm. Maybe someday we'll see something like that. Maybe here? No, nope. not here. <laughs> that was good, Eagle. Clearing it out of the basket. That's Zach Melton on that disc? It is. It's a Zach Melton Lucidex Enforcer. Oh no. Emerson getting some good luck. And me getting some not good luck. Hit off the basket. What are you talking about? No, it's, I guess it's not luck at all. I chose to do that to myself. <laughs> I could have laid up. I could have laid up. No one capitalizing, really. Wow, so Emerson beating everyone by two at least. At two right now. And Emerson gets three on me at this point. And he gets three on Nolan as well. This is a this is a huge move. Getting an ace really shifts momentum, and uh, it has shifted. Yeah, that was good strategy by Emerson, just like not having to putt on this hole because it's so windy. Yeah, and this is actually this is my first bogey of the tournament. So you're extremely happy right now. I'm so happy right now. I'm just applauding Emerson. I'm super pumped he got an ace. That graphic just said Emerson is 17 under. And it also said 17 under before the hole. Did we witness a mistake by Jomez? Hole 14, par three, 549 feet. We have a wide open shot, some OB behind the basket. All you're really trying to do is throw it as far as you can. We have kind of a uh, right to left crosswind here. Emerson exposes the right side of the discs, so that kind of causes it to get pushed over right. But if you were to expose the bottom side of the disc, it would end up pushing it really far left. So let's see if Luke can kind of correct on that. And there you see, he exposes the bottom edge of the disc on a hyzer angle, so that's gonna really push him far left. Yeah, this path is not playing OB, though. 
Um, OB is behind the basket on this little, uh, elevation. How do you call it? A step? Yeah. And this is like... Wow, you put it almost pin high? I did put it pin high. This is a far shot. And you uh, left yourself a little tailwind putt, so that's smart. Thinking ahead, as always. Nolan exposing that Anheuser angle to the win. Keeps him straight over there. There actually is OB if you go too far right, so I'm glad we didn't run into that on this card. Sidewalk is safe, obviously, since Luke's standing on it. It's a good Great approach shot. at the basket. I imagine Nolan's trying to give it just a little bit of a run, but leaks a little bit right. Some of the Boston Bruins die judge, or not judge, justice. I'm confused why it doesn't look windy. When I was playing this hole, it was really windy. It was windy. It's more than a look. Ooh. That looked really good from that angle. Yes. But it was actually really terrible. <laughs> so thanks, Jomez, for making us all look better. And the hot streak ends for Emerson. But I guess he's still five under through five holes. Yeah, I mean, with a three on this hole, or you're not really doing anything wrong. Five under wrong. on five holes. Let me correct myself. But it looks to be that everyone will be tapping in their par. Kind of a, a tweener hole. It's a really it's really hard to make a move on that this hole to get some separation on the field. But... So it is. Got hole 15, par three, 488 feet. There's actually a Mando on this hole right at the corner of the parking lot. You'll see it in the actual coverage. There's a legacy flag right there. And the rule is that you have to... That's not where the bathroom was. That's, no, it's not. They moved it. But the Mando is that you have to go right of this that flag right there, that American uh, legacy flag. And Emerson has success successfully made the Mando, but he's hit a tree and he's probably about, I don't know, 80 to 90 feet from the basket still. Yeah, these temples were, I don't know, a little weird. They were all, almost all of them were like, unreachable or like in this wind basically the best you can do is try and get a par i'm throwing a hypno huck s line pd2 I'm trying to throw it really as hard as i can i get a little bit too much anheuser angle on it forcing it out in the field and just really not much of a look there but with the wind playing here it's uh it's another tweener hole that no one's really expecting to get. Yeah, with our power, it's just we make our upshots a lot easier. But Nolan going for the lower, more direct line. I like what he did there. He's going to be by far the closest. Okay, so Emerson was not 80 feet from the basket. He's more like... 120. 120, 130. A little bit right. He's still in a comfortable range. Luke and Emerson really like throwing that little touchy forehand approach. And this was really bad. Whoa. A little bit of a, as I call it, monkey paw right there. Tapping in a par, and Luke will try to do the same. Heard some cage back there. 
or band. And actually, I'll give him a shout out. That band hit was Eric Oakley. I remember looking over, and it seems like every time I was looking over at Eric Oakley, he was missing a putt. But he actually shot a pretty good round, which we all have those rounds that could have been, but luckily he salvaged it and uh, still put a respectable number on there. Hole 16, par 3, 280 feet. That sidewalk there is out of bounds, sidewalk in the left. So from the tee pad, you have two options. You can throw a forehand shot or a backhand shot, pretty much uh, whatever you're feeling uh, the most comfortable with. Yeah, this is definitely one of, the, one of the few holes you really want to get. It was a little bit difficult here just because of the wind. We were shooting into a, a fairly strong headwind when uh, we were playing this hole. Sounds like you need a doom bird. I threw an FD3, so I guess it kind of is a doom bird, but not exactly a doom bird. Oh, you went sidearm route. It was very overstable and also very short. I hit the bonsai tree, and I remember from last year, Jeremy Colling actually called out Coda Hatfield for hitting that tree and saying that it was disrespectful in many cultures to hit a bonsai tree of sorts. I don't know if any of you remember that, but if you do, comment down below. I, I figured that I, I haven't had a birdie in a while and it was just time that I got one. But mostly you wanted to respect that tree. I wanted to respect that tree. I wanted to just show the tree that, like, I hit it for a good reason. You should have prayed and bowed. Oh, trust me. I do it when you're not looking. That's a part of being a vegan. Nice. Emerson from probably 24 feet. He had a, a right to left crosswind there, so it... It's a little bit difficult trying to keep it straight on that without it wanting to lift and uh, fade left. Also, suddenly we're putting on a different basket, so uh, we're all extremely confused with what's happening. I wasn't confused. You get confused a little bit too easily. It was confusing to me. Hole 17, par 3, 485 feet. Another pin location that has moved uh, from the first round. It's a little bit further, a little bit more left, but nothing too significant. I actually like this pin location better. It's a little bit more picturesque. But essentially, you're throwing the same shot from off the tee pad. Straight into the headwind. Whoa. So Luke's trying to go low line, and this just takes off. Oh, yeah. Luke was telling me about this shot yesterday and said I should say something nice about it. I'll just say, I'll say, Good effort, Luke. Good I'll, effort. I'll, I'll say something nice about it. Oh my God. If we were going to the previous hall, it would have been a great shot. <laughs> and he was first on the tee box. Mm hmm. So that's a positive hear me I just say so bad because I completely overturned this roller and I wasn't happy but and you I expect perfection actually I was happy I'm just happy to be here Jen. well that looks good it's a really great move on it and holy cow he gets an unfortunate leaf hit if he were to the iron leaf the iron leaf on the ground. Those dang autumn rounds, man. Not getting the skips you deserve. This is a move right here. He doesn't get the unlucky leaf. And he's probably, he is inside the circle on this hole. Did you drop some lotion out of your bag? <laughs> Luke was talking to me. Rube dropping the lotion. I carry Finnish hand cream in my bag just because... There's something about the finished hand cream, man. It, like, doesn't make your hands greasy, but it moisturizes them really nice so you don't get, like, cracks in your fingers. 
That was a great scramble shot by Luke. Still a chance for par from the other side of the fairway. Other side of the park, almost. I don't really know what to say about that shot. How about nothing? <laughs> that wouldn't make us very good commentators. Or very good commentators. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of things that doesn't make us very good commentators. And a couple of things that make us great commentators. Yeah. I guess you can say that. Damn, I was hoping Luke was going to save the three. That would have been, cool. been an epic three. For a two? Known wow. for a two. That's a great one to get. Get his round back on track. If I had to guess, that's the only two on that hole. Emerson with a good three. Moving on, hole 18, par three, 226 feet. It's another pin location that has moved. Previous round, it was far right, but this one is actually a little bit shorter, probably a little bit easier. Just sitting right there, you have the option to go over the top, up the gut with a slight hyzer. And it looks like Nolan will be taking the low, Kind of skip shot. He's parked. Some pro line monster they threw. I would say this is the easiest hole on the course. I'd I'd say it is also. I'm going grenade and Whoa. I have no idea why you would opt from grenade on this shot. Like it makes no sense at all. I have never missed this hole throwing a grenade, you know that? I did not know that. It's called. But why experience. would you go over the top? The shot down, down below is so easy. The over the top's even easier. Not in that wind. Yeah, it is. I know how to play the grenade in the wind. If you ask Miles Seaborn on this hole, he would never go down the gut. And Miles Seaborn's a Texas legend. Anyway, anyway what Texas I learned about Texas on this hole was I uh, skipped and hit the basket, and uh, Matt Bell and Zach Johnson. In Instantly went to their uh, pockets and gave me a dollar. That's good. See, Simon, I've wow. never missed this whole throwing grenade. Oh, you were foreshadowing. Without spoiling. Yeah. Genius. Do you ever smile? I don't. Good. Never show emotion. Emerson probably has never missed this hole either. Because he's good. I've also never missed this hole. I've only played it once. See? You're in good company. I've never not hit metal on this hole. Till today. I'm going to hit metal again. I'll give you a dollar if you do. Really? I have to see it, though. Well, I'm on chase cards, so it might happen. So we all birdied that previous hole. We have hole 19, par 3, 275 feet. This one's a really... This is a different kind of hole where the shot is throwing a thumber, but that's really the only way to easily access this basket. Otherwise, you can opt for a high turnover forehand, low forehand, high putter stall shot, but thumber is really what you want to do. And that's what Nolan's doing. And that's good. It's good. He has a good look. I'm going to opt for the thumber as well. That sounded good. And out of my hand. Felt great. Gosh, this disc just rolls. It's his favorite thing to do. <laughs> but Emerson is not going thumber. He's opting for a high forehand. Yeah, the trick here is to keep it as wide as you possibly can. Great and shot. Do that. That's almost as good as you can throw the forehand. 
That looks really good too. Yep, you want it to push, push left for as far as you can keep it, and then have it dump at the last second. Me from about 22 feet. That's just good. Nolan from about 21 feet. Yeah, if you if you throw it right there, you're kind of expecting to make it. Luke with a good birdie. And then Emerson from a a close distance as well. I'll be from about 15 feet. Good connection. I like Emerson's putt. It's like a good combination between push and spin. I'd say it's like 85% spin, but just a little bit of push in there to, to keep it consistent. How much push does that make? 15% Good math. Thanks. So this is a hole that you've never seen before. Hole 20, par three, 504 feet. And off the tee, there's a light post that's actually a mando that you have to play left of. And you're just throwing uphill so you want to get something that gets up, turns right, and goes as far as it possibly can. I'm opting for a Metal Flake PD2, just really trying to wow. rip into it on an Anheuser and have it fade back left. But I catch, I catch some of the trees, and I'm in that little ditch right there, and I'll have a pretty easy approach. Nice little steppy step. Nice little steppy step. Can we get some Joe Mesmert saying that? Hopefully. Be good. Good shot, Emerson. Get that wrist loose. A good aiming point is that great water height. tower. Just, yeah, that's, that's great. Not hitting a thing. Nolan going with this this destroyer that he's been throwing all around. It's a little bit high. Pretty much, this hole's another tweener. It's really hard to get a move on a disc to get near the basket to get a, get a birdie. So most players are just going to be kind of ending in this area and pitching up for their three. Yeah, I don't know if this was intended to be a uh, par three or par four. I don't see anyone parking this hole. You have enough room to push the basket a little bit deeper and actually make it into a more legitimate par four. Maybe next year. See you next year. Will we see you next year? Somewhere. Okay, that's good. I was worried. Looks like everyone will be cleaning up their pars. Assuming these guys are good enough to make a five footer. And right now you'll see those those flags blown in the background. It means we'll have a tailwind for this hole. Hole 21, par four. 522 feet. I really like this hole. The tee shot's really fun. You get to throw over water, through a gap, put yourself in a landing zone, and then kind of throw a, an approach to uh, a green with slight elevation. I think it's a really picturesque hole, and it's, uh, it's probably one of my favorites on this uh, temporary layout. I'm playing way um, wide. I pulled this a little bit too wide and I almost find the out of bounds back there, but it ended up being a pretty decent shot. Emerson's doing the opposite of what I did, taking a low screamer up the gut, skipping. Oh, this wasn't par four. I'm so confused.
getting a little bit of lift. It needs to not hit a tree. That's okay. That'll leave him about 200, 220 to the basket. No one get in the air. Doesn't hit a single tree. It's a great drive. <laughs> Throwing first. We loop. We got an ice cream truck in the background. This is what I call the ice cream truck shot. Do you think he calls it that too? <laughs> yes. Okay, good. What do you call this shot? The smooth, steppy, steppy sidearm. Park job. The smooth, no steppy, steppy. Oh, yeah. Nolan, I don't have a name for this shot, but... No name other than good shot. The airdrop shot. I'm close enough to throw a little stab, jump, putt approach. Stab, and jump, shot. <laughs> we don't need to keep naming shots. Okay, sorry. Everyone is within a good 15 feet. Should be no problem. Star frame. Star frame. It's kind of in between par four, but I like it. Pull 22, par three, 330 feet. There's a Mando left of the American flag, so you don't throw a big shot over the memorial. Kind of throwing a sidearm if you have it. That's also not where the basket was. It's close enough. It's close. You want to throw a sidearm or a slow-turning Anheuser shot. There is OB if you go far right but you're not really thinking about it too much unless you early release a shot or overturn a, a backhand. Emerson does get a little bit of early release, but this disc's going fast, and that's pretty much part. I like that line. Nice smooth sidearm Ooh. and hits the basket. Did you give him a dollar? I didn't. I don't carry. I don't carry cash. That's the thing. Like, you can request a dollar from me if I see your shot. PayPal me a but dollar. But then I'll, I'll PayPal or Venmo you a dollar. You have Venmo? I do. What is it? I don't know. It's. I. Everyone says it's like an easy version of PayPal. Oh. Speaking of PayPal and money. That putt was money. <laughs> this one was money also. Money in the bank. Cha-ching. Cha-ching. And assuming Luke makes his putt, we got back-to-back back, back back star, star frames. frames. Actually, no, three in a row. Because there was a star par on the that one hole. One hole, um, that I forget the whole number of. That one, okay. This hole, hole 23, par 3, 429 feet. One of my favorites on the course. Downhill, very picturesque. Don't find yourself on the right side. So, play a straight shot that kind of skips towards the basket. Sidearm that pushes straight for most of its life with a little bit of check up at the end. This is one of the nicest holes on the course. I throw it with so much hyzer, not enough flip. And I put myself where I hate to be. Right after you said, don't go right, you went right. Yeah, I should have thought about my future self commentating on this. Yes. And then maybe I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> Emerson misses a little bit left, but that is the correct miss. We'll have a little bit of a run. Ooh. 
Luke playing it down the left side. Doesn't get quite as much turd as he may like. But similar to Emerson's, he's he's looking at the basket and nothing in his way. This course is so weird because all these holes are like gettable. No, I, it was on him. But none of them, f then, almost none of them feel like, okay, I, I'm going to get this. I have to get mm -hmm. this. Absolutely. Yeah, it, everything is, you don't want to bogey things. You don't want to bogey holes. But you just got to take the birdies when they come. And I was... That was wisdom right there. You don't want to bogey, you just take the birdies when they come. That's a good disc golf rule to live by. Yes. You'll you'll place a lot higher in your division, whatever division you're playing, if you, you live by that. Hear that, Simon? That's your pro tip. Take it or leave it. And this is for my save. And I hate when this happens. It was so bad you clapped. I was clapping at it. Wow, you have like a long bogey save here. I was I was prepared to five it. I was prepared to watch you five it. But the good guy always <laughs> wins at the end of the movie. Oh, you're the good guy? I like to think of myself as that. Does that does that make me bad? <laughs> Maybe you need an image change. Maybe that'll be my New Year's resolution. Who knows? We want to see the Eagle Rebel. Oh. Nolan also also gonna bogey, it looks like. So we'll walk together to the next hole and cry on each other's shoulders. That lonely feeling right there. I know it. You're not alone, Nolan. The last hole, hole 24, par 3, 409 feet. You have an open fairway and then a severe dog leg right going up the hill. It's a really difficult difficult hole to access unless you go over the top with a big Anheuser. I just want to let you guys know that Simon was dabbing for some reason when I was talking. So just put that mental image in your head. This hole, like, after yesterday being such a quick and easy fun round, this round was long and a lot of backups six extra holes and i think this took like four hours and today's gonna be even longer because we're playing championship gold tees yeah and it's like 20 degrees colder it'll be cold and windy and wet out there today i don't think it's gonna be wet it i'm opting for night. the big anheuser felt good it was an okay shot i'll have a pretty good opportunity to save my three from there. Nolan throwing this T-Bird for the 24th time, it seems. Great. You can't throw it any better than that, really. How would you throw it better? Well, you would have to go at the basket to be better, and then it's kind of lucky. Sh shout out to Austin Hannum. He actually parked this hole. Of course he did. Just like, I think he was probably 10 feet. Took some sort of pro discus disc. I know Emerson birdied at round one. And put it right next to the basket. A little bit of oh, Nolan had like a rough finish. Up. Oh, so he goes thumber here. That's not a thumber. That's a tomahawk? On, yes. Baby. It looked awkward. And that is, that's great from where he was at. He threw it over a pretty tall t a pretty tall tree in order to execute that shot. Yeah, and if Emerson makes his putt, he shoots 14 under. Mm-hmm. Super hot round. Yeah, that's way better than I would ever ask for my round going. 
Is Emerson your hero? Right now, yes. He's my hero, too. It's a great round by Emerson. 14, 14 under. Shooting a 61. And assuming I make my putt, I shoot a 66, which is five strokes behind Emerson. So Emerson beat the field by five today. Yeah, the rating shows that he shot a 1060, like a 1065, which I honestly felt was a little bit low. It's yeah, it should be like a 1070, 1080, but but yeah, that concludes round two of the Veterans Park Open. And whoa, I don't know if I'll be here the next round for commentary because I got to take a flight back to Boulder, Colorado. But I appreciate you guys watching. And anything to add, Simon? Yep, I'll be here. We might have Nate Perkins on the mic as well for commentary. Like and subscribe, and uh, good luck. Keep on dreaming. Crush Boys out. <laughs>